The pooch may lie, the pooch may steal. The pooch may, pooch may refer to himself in the third person? Occasionally. But the pooch will not cheat. Well, the pooch can relax. I was worried about Cougar. Yeah, right. It's always the quiet ones. <laughs> what? It's blind man's bluff. High car wins. How in the hell can a man cheat you? I feel like I got something over here. I feel like I got something. Queen, Queen King, King Jack. Queen King Jack. All right. One, two, three, go. I got a great, great feeling about this one. Well, your mama had a great feeling last night. Oh, <laughs> that was a mama joke. What? <laughs> All right. All right. Let's go. Okay, let's All right. All right. I will raise you. You don't want to do that. Oh, no? The piece you got off that Honduran general? Yes. Guess what? I'm definitely in. Oh. <laughs> let's go. All right. Whoa. <laughs> so even me up. How many knives do you have? What is going on here? Cool. Your bet. Hey, loser. Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. I'm Robert. And the movie that we are covering today is The Losers from 2010. Now, uh, this this movie was actually adapted from a comic book series. Uh, The Losers is a comic book series written by Andy Diggle and illustrated by Jock and published by Vertigo Imprint of DC Comics. And the... uh, the comics ran for 32 issues from August 2003 to March 2006. So uh, for you uh, Adrenaline Cinema podcast fans, you'll enjoy it for the fact that, you know, it's action packed. It's fun. You got a great st- all star cast. And for you Panels to Pixels podcast fans, it's basically another comic book adapted to film. So uh, this movie was directed by Sylvan White and produced by Joel Silver, Akiva Goldson, and Carrie Foster, written by Peter Berg, James Vanderbilt, and Andy Diggle. Music by John Ottman. So, uh, Rob, considering you do Fantasy Picks Movie Edition, uh, is this a composer that you are familiar with? Uh, I've heard of him. I'm not very familiar with his stuff i'm sure there is a few things out there uh well i mean he's done quite a few as a matter of fact i'm looking at his stuff right now the only thing that i would say i mean he's done x-men days of future pass Hmm. x-men apocalypse he did astro boy (laughs) okay which is you know he also did fantastic four rise of the silver surfer superman returns regular fantastic four house of wax look at that so so he's done you know some some notable stuff out there i'm not gonna say that he hasn't and but i haven't really sat down to like really listen to his stuff and analyze it all right well the tagline for this particular movie was called anyone else would be dead by now (laughs) 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 that's how they were trying to promote the film at the time when it came out the movie budget at the time was 25 million Uh, unfortunately it made 29.9 million oof at the theater that's rough yeah, uh, yeah, this is uh, considered a box office disaster. It's one of those direct to HBO or direct to video kind of marketed films at the time, which I find odd too because uh, the cast that we have within it, some of them at the time weren't highly notable or people that we see now commonly in films and TV, but. <laughs> Now, at the time, you know, they they were pretty much, I I would say, at the beginning of their huge celebrity. And this movie didn't really, you know, make the mark. But honestly, in my opinion, I thought it was pretty entertaining and 
action packed and fun filled. But that that's my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I actually like this movie. I found it to be very entertaining. And of course, funny enough, I know people out there are going to disagree with me, but th- you remember that I think around the same time, mm-hmm. what was it? The A team came out. The A team movie came out, right. which so, actually, I it, it, uh, this is something that I had my notes and it ca- gave me that same feel, same of- vibe vibe yeah but people like the a-team better than they did i actually like this team better than the a-team and i think it's mostly because like the actors i think are great i think you know Aldris Alva was fantastic uh jeffrey dean morgan was uh, but honestly the 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 hidden star of all this was chris evans (laughs) um who i feel like he really made this movie a lot of fun yes he did but it's unfortunate because like you were saying this movie 48%, Forty-eight percent. Uh, it had a forty-eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and the audience score was still a fifty-four percent. So the audience was very divided on this uh, on this movie. I found it to be very entertaining. Mm-hmm. This was like a group of people that I would have loved to continue seeing. Yeah, other you know other things with. Yeah, it, it was like a group of misfits that were able to work together at a certain point, but through some sort of issue became the outcasts or the losers and then they had to uh find their way back so for those of you who who are not familiar with the movie and yes this is a spoiler full podcast it's been notated in, in the podcast notes but the synopsis for this movie is uh, a tale of double cross and revenge centered upon the members of an elite u.s special forces unit sent into the Bolivian jungle on a search and destroy mission. The team, Clay, Jensen, Roke, Pooch, Cougar, find themselves the target of a lethal betrayal instigated from inside by a powerful enemy known only as Max. Presumed dead, the group makes to even the score. When they're joined by the mysterious Aisha, a beautiful operative with their uh, her own agenda, Working together, they must remain deep undercover while tracking the heavily guarded Max, a ruthless man bent on embroiling the world in a new high-tech global war. Now, it's kind of long and convoluted, but that's what you get when you look at Amazon <laughs> and and all these other uh, places for the uh, synopsis that's out there. But in a nutshell, it pretty much dictates what we always knew from the 80s from the 18 right yeah <laughs> yeah it's just you know hey they were what is it they were blamed for something and they're you know they're on the run and now they're you know although at the end of this they don't seem to be on the run they seem to have gotten you know vindicated and vindicated and stuff yeah, like that so yeah yeah they're able to do what they need to but they become uh what in the comic happens is that they become for hire like the a team mm. so that that's the one thing that i guess they were banking on the idea of having a sequel and oh, it, they were it, definitely hoping that this will become a franchise yeah and because of the failure of it that's why yeah they actually uh scrapped that even though there's been rumors for years that they've been wanting to do a second one I don't know how, I mean, if a second one came around or maybe redo it again, I don't know. Hmm. Be interesting. Be, it, the thing is that the comic book, and it's funny because I, I bought the comic book in preparation for this uh, podcast. I haven't read it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you know, So I bought it, but I just never had the chance to read it. But from what I've been told, they try to, f- they, they actually tried to follow the, like I read actually, no, actually, you know what? I read like two or three pages mm-hmm. and it was just exactly like the uh, movie. Mm-hmm. And somebody out there was saying that, yeah, they kind of did almost a, uh, a panel to panel, you know, like a panel to uh panel to pixel. Yeah. A panel <laughs> to pixel kind of, you know, uh, transition ad- adaptation yeah. of it. So, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm still interested in reading the comic book to see how closely they relate to each other. Yeah, just to see. Yeah, it's 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 very interesting. It's very much like all right to put a comparison to it. Remember the Tick? Yes, <laughs> and it was a comic. 
they actually adapted it to it. And now, mind you, listeners, we were supposed to do this on Panels to Pixels podcast years ago. We never did it. They actually have two seasons of The Tick. Now, mind you, back in the early 2000s, they actually tried to do the series before it failed. But on Amazon, it did very well, but they didn't really pick it up for a third season. And they didn't follow through after that. But it was very good from what I remember because I watched those two seasons on Amazon. I saw those two seasons. It's funny because we're talking about this now, but I saw those two seasons and I thought it's great because now they have Arthur. uh, Yeah, uh, Arthur. Mm Mm-hmm looking exactly like he does either in the, comic. In, the, in the comic which the first series did not do from what no. i hear no they didn't but this guy Wahlberg was a much better i think tick than the guy that was you know in the t- in the two seasons because he just i don't know he was just like he looked the part he he spoke like the cartoon the cartoon was amazing I love the freaking cartoon. <laughs> yeah, same here. You know, so I, I just felt like, oh, he kind of brings that persona out more mm-hmm. than the uh, the guy from, uh, I, and I apologize for not knowing the actor's name in uh, Amazon, but mm-hmm. those two seasons on Amazon were a lot closely better in writing than the uh than the other one yeah that, the, being, that being said <laughs> yeah yeah the 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 first season was like an, a, a trial but error right <laughs> issue uh the guy that you're thinking of actually played the uh, he played the roommate to sean and sean of the dead okay to give you an idea of the actor right. he's a british actor i don't know his name off the top of my head but i remember that that's who it is this guy's buff has a really deep voice americanized his voice at the time but he did a great job in it yeah but yeah just to give you an idea of stuff that was going on with comics and and how they transition to film and certain and certain things like that. That's that's what literally would happen with this with the losers. To let you know, for those who you who haven't watched the movie or are familiar with some of the people, these are some of the people that we may know from the film. We're going to do brief descriptions off the top of our heads. I'm going to start it off. We have the one and only Jeffrey D. Morgan. We know as the comedian from the movie The Watchmen from 2009. We also know him as Negan from The Walking Dead that ran from 2010 to 2022. But he he literally came in towards the end of The Walking Dead, obviously. Uh, He was in a movie called The Fall or A Fall in 2022. He was in the the (laughs) adaptation of Rampage from Arcade to Movie. In 2018 with The Rock, if you'll recall that movie. Uh, And he was also in Grey's Anatomy as well, uh, which my niece, uh, if I didn't mention that, she'd yell at me because he played Denny and everybody loved Denny. That's where I first uh, that's where I first noticed him. And he did such a great job there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he was the dad in uh, Supernatural as well. Mm. Okay. (laughs) And yeah, he plays the the character Clay, which is uh, I, what was it? The Colonel? They called him. Uh, they called him either the Colonel or uh, you know, what? Let me see. I think they called him Colonel, from what I remember. In the movie, they called him more Clay uh, than they. Yeah, did his Colonel. name Clay. Right. Right. Yeah. But towards the end, they called him Colonel. Correct. But uh, next one up is Adris Alba as Roke. An expert in detonating and deactivating explosives. He is also an expert in knife combat. Alva previously worked with uh, Joel Silver in multiple movies and opted that uh, his ties with Silver helped his him sustain a role in the film. But if for everybody out there, Adris Alba is, of course, very well known for uh, Brit- uh, British... Uh, detective uh show uh luther mm-hmm. which is he he got multiple i believe he got multiple um uh, awards for, yeah awards or emmys for that but of course he's very well known for the mcu's um hemdel yep in thor so fantastic actor fantastic in everything he does yeah a uh, great yeah. dj too by the yeah. way he's a dj <laughs> yeah he DJs. He did a live uh, during the pandemic. He was doing a live thing 
uh, I forget where it was. It was on some island. Everybody was quarantined. They were all they. It, it was a wild thing. He, he right. did su- such a cool thing. Yeah, he he was also in Pacific Rim. He's in the Suicide Squad from 2021. Uh, he also had uh, well, I'm forgetting the Stephen King movie that he had done back in the day. Um, but he was also in Rock and Rolla and 28 weeks later just to give you an idea uh he was also in wow the alien movie prometheus oh okay which you we had covered on fantasy picks movie edition with you on your podcast cool yeah, yeah. No, he was yeah he was actually great in that too yeah he's, he's a really talented actor uh a lot of people love him uh, listen a lot of people want it you know if they were going to do a black batman they wanted him to be the batman or if they wanted a james bond they wanted him to be james yeah. bond no he he is he is at a level you know that most actors are not and i think he's fantastic so yeah. i mean and, and you know it's funny because no matter how good he is sometimes you find him in the wackiest <laughs> roles out yeah. there it is so true. he's not really full of himself in the sense of like, listen, I'm Adris Alba. I'm freaking fantastic. <laughs> no, it's just sometimes you see him in stuff that you're like, is that really him? I was like, all right, either he <laughs> needed the money or he just like, I'm bored. I'll just, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, he's one of those people to look out for, but that, that was just, just like with Jeffrey D. Morgan. It, right. It, it's one of those actors that you go, I know that guy. I've seen him <laughs> before. I love what he does. Exactly. Just like the next a- actor that we have, Zoe Saldana. Who doesn't love Zoe Saldana? Zoe Saldana, oh, beautiful woman. She, I'm forgetting where she came from exactly. Well, she is, she comes from the Dominican Republic. Okay. She's Dominican. Yeah, she's Dominican. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think one of her first roles, let me see. Crossroads? Center Stage was her first movie, which was an American teen drama filmed by Nicholas uh, Heitner. Hmm. But yeah, so I mean, she's I mean, she's been in a ton of stuff. She was also in Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. Yep. I think that's the first time I really noticed her. First time I really noticed her was in. uh, Was it Abrams Star Trek in 2009? Yeah. Played Lieutenant O'Hara. We all know her and uh, Avatar. All right. So we all know her from that. Obviously, Gamora from Guardians of the Galaxy. Columbiana is another one in 2011. Obviously, the whole Avatar series. Uh, like I said before, she I, I see it listed here. Crossroads from 2002, which was an old. It, it's one of those early teen kind of stuff. Right. Uh, I'm looking at certain things and I'm thinking, nah, these are in here because they just want to throw our name in there. <laughs> but I don't think she was an original Terminator 1984. But um, uh, yeah. where do you see that? Exactly. <laughs> it was under it's under Google, but I'm going to stick with the no, most. Yeah, no, I'm looking at her ones. filmography and I mean, it's quite extensive. Yeah. Uh, and she's been in some great projects, like you said, Star Trek, Avatar, mm-hmm. and she's been in some, you know, some well-known stuff, but she's also, she's done a lot of voiceover work too. That so she, she has. Yeah. She was in Book of Life, My Little Pony, uh, one called Vivo, never heard of that one. So she's done a few things and she's done, actually, she's uh, re- done a reoccurring role of Gamora in What If. Yes. So, yeah, she's uh, done her voice work for her character in What If, which we are covering on Panels to Pixels podcast for season two, everybody. So uh, keep in touch with it comes to that. <laughs> <laughs> she pop. <laughs> she was also in a rela- You know, she was in a relationship with uh, Bradley Cooper, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Just saw that in in here in her personal stuff. I was like, okay, sure. Why not? Let me <laughs> yeah, just sure, mention. Why not? Let me just <laughs> let me just mention that. So, so Gamora and Rocket got got it on. Okay. <laughs> hey, sometimes you know, <laughs> you just needed a furry love. I know. Sometimes you got to do a <laughs> raccoon or something like that. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where did we go? Uh, next up. <laughs> Uh, so next up is actually Chris Evans, and I would say Chris Evans, you know, Chris Evans, he's the team intelligence specialist and computer hacker. Mm-hmm. 
Evans is fucking phenomenal in this yeah. role. Yeah, yeah. He is so funny. It, uh, it's his com- comedic chops that come in from I the wish early I saw 2000s. Him. Yeah, and- I wish I saw him in more comedy stuff because, wow. Well, the one thing that I remember him from is not another teen movie. Well, he was also in uh, Scott Pilgrim. He that was is funny. true. He was funny in that. Like, he is really real. Like, you know, you, you think of Chris Evans and you think, of course, of Captain America. Yeah. Right? And in Captain America, you know, while he, I thought he played a fantastic role in that. Mm-hmm. But a lot of his stuff has been comedic in the past. And it oh, was yeah. just, and like, this was actually like his role in this movie. It was, was more comedic action more than anything. Comedic action, but he was the most interesting guy out of all of them. He was the face man of the group, if you think about it. Yes. He was the pretty boy, mm-hmm. manipulator, <laughs> and does all that stuff, especially when he starts singing that Journey song. Oh, and- my God. <laughs> Don't stop. <laughs> when he walked in and started, uh, like, <laughs> I thought that was the f- funniest thing because he was just like going at it and you could see there was a part that you could kind of see like the actors had a smirk in their face <laughs> yeah they're like sh- i can't believe he's doing this <laughs> well well more like i'm sure like I, i'm about to bust out laughing because this guy's too funny doing this but yeah. no yeah he's fantastic in that and of course chris evans has like i said we said before known for his role in captain america known for his role in um in Scott Pilgrim uh, versus, uh, what's that movie called? Scott, um, Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Versus the world. Uh, then you got Snowpiercer from 2013, which was which, also a, a comic adapted to film and had done three seasons of a great TV show that unfortunately was canceled. Yeah. Yeah. It's unfortunate. But yeah, he, I mean, of course, through all the Avenger stuff, he was also in Glass Onion. Yeah, um, you know, which is also great. He did the one with the uh, what's her name, um, the Armis, oh, Anna the Armis, which yeah. I think came out in Netflix. Honestly, that was not the greatest movie, <laughs> but you know, he is he's. I think he's a great actor. I just you know, I wish he did. I either I did either I wish he did more comedic roles or a little roles that would like really put him out there to get much more recognized yeah he he could expand his repertoire of like his acting more and yeah. he, he could do dramatic he could do i think he didn't want to get stapled as your captain america that's all we know you as but right. yet he has this comedic side of uh, about him which is funny too but for the fact that he was the first johnny storm that we knew in the fantastic four for the first two films that we got <laughs> yeah. And uh, he was perfect for it for his comedic timing in that as well. There was a movie that I really did enjoy with him in it. It was him and Scarlett Johansson called The Perfect Score in 2004. That was a little bit more comedic drama. Uh, drama. It was right. based about, uh, it's a true story based upon how these kids try to break in to steal all the SAT questions to cheat so that way they could get the perfect SAT scores. Oh, okay. So uh, <laughs> I I have it. It I it, it was one of those things where I went to um, Papa John's and I was standing around. And it's like, oh, they're trying to get rid of DVDs, and it's like, oh, it's for a dollar. And I picked it up and I watched it. And I'm like, hot damn, this is pretty funny. And it's before <laughs> Scarlett Johansson was Scarlett Johansson, and before Chris Evans was Chris Evans. But I, I thought it was pretty cool. And you know, he's one of those stars that you see that you just know and you know. He's going to deliver whatever he can to uh, provide entertainment. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Especially yeah. when he plays himself in Free Guy, when he looks at the whole thing with the the shield, when Ryan Reynolds picks up the shield against himself, who's like an Uber version of himself in the, the, the movie. <laughs> uh, he's also done a lot of philanthropy uh, work, too, which is really great about him. So, uh, you know. I think he's a fantastic actor, but uh, also it seems like he's actually a really cool guy. Oh, yeah. Um, and it seems like a lot of people like him. You know, he's not one of those uh, dick actors or something like that. Exactly. Which is great. So, yeah. And last but not least, the other actors in the particular movie that I did leave out, unfortunately, everybody. But I had to, you know, I wanted to spotlight those that we all know that right. we could see. And we go, I know that person. 
So uh, last but not least is Jason Patrick, who plays Max, the uh, the villain in the role, who I like to think of as uh, I think of it as John Travolta in Swordfish, the way he portrays the character. Well, he portrays a character like a comic book, uh, like an eat, you know, like uh, like the like the villain in a comic book, because that's what's exactly what this is. Like yeah. honestly, his character it's a very comic book character. Yes, you know, so and and it's fine because that's exactly what this movie is. So he portrayed him pretty well. <laughs> He's very freaking you know psycho person, you know, uh, the character, but. No, it's I thought it, I thought he played that part also really well. Yeah. And, and well Jason Patrick we he's no uh stranger to the podcast for Adrenaline Cinema because uh when Reman and I covered of all things The Lost Boys, you will all remember him as playing Michael from 1987's Lost Boys. He was also in Rush in 1991, which is a very great dramatic movie. And it, it was about drug addiction during that time. It, it was up for a lot of awards. Uh, he was also in Sleepers in 1996. Uh, he <laughs> he was the one to pa- th- that was passed the torch of speed from Keanu Reeves. So he was in Speed 2. Now, right. not something that we would want to. He would probably want to talk about, but <laughs> nobody uh, wants to talk about. It. <laughs> he was also in like Solar Babies and a whole bunch of other movies. I'm sorry, Jason, if I'm bringing these up and if you're listening, but uh, those are the things that I remember from. But he, it's not like he's he's a really good actor in what he does, and I do appreciate him. His father is Jason Miller, who is a playwright and an actor, and you would remember his father from the original 1973, The Exorcist. Oh, okay. and he yeah he played uh, I think what what was it Father Karras. If I recall properly, but yeah, uh, I, I, I'll look it up real quick. I don't want to say the wrong thing. <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Father Karras. Yeah. He played Father Karras and he also, uh, his father actually reprised his role in Exorcist three, which I did see in the theaters too. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he, he comes from a, uh, acting legacy from that. And interesting uh, enough, I mean, with his career, the, his claim to fame is, you know, the Lost Boys. Yeah. And he actually, uh, for you listeners that are out there and that you love conventions like I do, you'll see Kiefer Sutherland. You'll see Jason Patrick there. You'll see uh, a whole bunch of other people from the Lost Boys out there doing conventions as well. Uh, Alex Winter and Corey Feldman. They're, they're doing that more and more now. Uh, I think. Brooke McCarter is another one too, who played one of the vampires. But uh, 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 somebody who's a friend of the show, Sean Clark, actually provides that those celebrity uh, guests for conventions, and it's amazing because now they're capitalizing on it. My friend Jamie Dimmick got to meet Kiefer Sutherland and Jason Patrick in one weekend, and it wasn't expensive at all. And she said they were really great to talk to, and the panels were amazing. So if you're a true fan of that kind of thing, look out for it. You just go on. Uh, I I like to go to them whenever they're available because I love to listen to actors and anybody that's involved in a film or anything like that at uh, conventions. So, yeah, but yeah, they uh, I say look out for them and uh, check that out. Absolutely. Other than that, we will move right along. So we kind of topped on it a little bit, Rob, but I'm taking it that you enjoyed the film, regardless of it failing at the box office. And, yeah, it's yeah. a fun popcorn flick. I mean, it, it's like, look, it's don't expect it to be, you know, freaking Casablanca or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> this is more of a, hey, I want to sit down and just kind of watch this silly movie. And, and that's exactly what it is. And there's a lot of action, of course. Yeah. Over the top action. There are characters in there that you, of course, you say, wow, these are kind of also a little bit over the top but you got to remember this is coming from a comic book so i enjoyed it because i think one great actors who just seemed like they were actually having fun uh two again again because of chris evans bringing a part to bringing a role and a part to the whole thing which made it a lot of fun and also i think it was also the dynamic 
relation, you know, like the whole relationship between all of them. You could tell that this was a close knit group. Uh, they've been around for a while. They've done tons of missions. They look out after each other. Uh, so you could see that relationship in the movie, you know, which which I think is great. So and it's just a kind of a group that you would love to be a part of, you know, even though I know they do a lot of dangerous shit and, you know, <laughs> but, you know, so that's why I liked it a lot. I thought it was just a, a, a just a great movie, just a great movie to enjoy. Yeah, I, I agree that that was the whole point why I wanted to discuss this, not because it was just based after a comic book, but the action gravitated me towards the actual the movie itself. The promos, I saw it on a, oddly enough, I didn't see it when it was in the theater. I saw it when it was on, I think, either Netflix or Amazon Prime at one point. Oh, I saw it in the theater. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I saw it and I was like, oh, I got to, I saw the advertisement for it or something. And I was like, I got to see this. Oh, this looks interesting. Wow. And it did catch me. I'm like, okay. It, it kind of gave me the feel and vibes of, now it's a you know I'm going to compare it to something that's a little bit more over the top and crazy, right? And a little zany, something that I always wanted to cover called the Smoke and Aces. You that, know, I got to see that movie not so long ago, uh, I believe. You know, a few months ago for the first time mm-hmm. <laughs> ever, and I was like, "How did I not see this movie?" Really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, it's that that movie had a lot. You had Chris Pine in it. Yeah. Yeah, of all things, you're like, holy crap. And then, oh, oh my God, the guy who played the blob in X-Men, uh, Wolverine, he was in it, too. He's very popular. We talked about him in Real Steel. Right. Uh, and then you had what? Um, oh, I forget her name. The musician Alicia Keys. Yes. And that particular movie, uh, Jeremy Piven was in it. Uh, there, there's so many people in there. But the thing was, is that was such a huge thing. A uh, huge movie as well. Very action packed very diverse had some comedic well dark comedic humor because it was rated r right and not that this wasn't either but the thing is is that it it entertained just like you said before it was more of like a popcorn film and that action pack was like you just want to sit there and just like your eyes just don't fall off the screen because you're you're wanting and anticipating what's going to come next right and that's what really gravitated me towards this because not just the action, the adventure, but I'm sorry, I have to say it. Everybody in there, as far as the cast, is beautiful. They're beautiful people, in my opinion. Well, yeah. listen, Zoe Saldana is freaking gorgeous in this. Oh, you see and a the, lot of the, her. And, yeah, you see a lot of her. <laughs> you know, Jeffrey D. Morgan, of course, you know, handsome guy too, but they also had him in his um he was always like, you know, in a in a blazer or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and then of course Chris Evans. Chris Evans, he did he do this while he was doing Captain America? No, I'm not certain. I'm I just sure. know that he was buff, like he was buffed. He was, was buff, like, yeah. but the thing is, all right, he's always been that way. He I had believe. to have been because uh, Captain America: The First Avenger came out in 2011. Okay, so he had been like bulking up for the role at that or point. something like that but yeah. yeah and then of course elder saba but then you had you know um you had the rest of the cast i think that was actually you know everybody just good looking cast you yeah. know they're, they're good looking people and that was the whole thing yeah uh it, there was not a, a person that didn't say damn <laughs> <You> go <laughs> okay but the thing is is that yeah it, it's also like i said the uh, the comedic wit within it within the characters and the story plot itself, which was reminiscent of the A team. Right. To me, I did not know this was a comic book related movie till uh somebody had mentioned it to me and they said, uh brush up, look at it again and then watch the movie again. And right. I did. And I could see where it was very much comic booky, but considering it was more military based and it was like, I guess their version of an A team in comic book form for its time. And then, and and now we have it in film. And this was also, like you said before, competing probably with the original A team movie that we had in the theaters around that time. So people like we, we already had this movie and it was on (laughs) TV. (laughs) So why did they do this? But honestly, uh, I don't think it was a bad movie altogether. I really did enjoy it. And it's one of those that, 
I could throw on in the background at any given time and just have fun watching it. Oh, absolutely. And and we have to also talk about the needle drops in this uh, uh, movie were pretty cool, too. Okay. Um, with a lot of the just the music itself. And I'm trying to look it up right now because I know that. Um, but they had some good, you know, some good songs in this. Well, see. we already know one right there. Don't Stop Believing by Journey. Right. What else? Like Black Betty? Uh, could could be. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. I have it right here in my notes. Black oh, Betty. Oh, okay. <laughs> in the very beginning. It's in the very beginning of the movie. Right. So, yeah, it, it's like uh, I have it in my notes, and this is me verbatim reading my notes that I wrote several weeks ago because we were supposed to have this out to you a long time ago, but sorry, but it's here now. Uh, I, I like the intro with the betting for the guns in the very beginning, the the way they introduce the characters, and then it leads into the mission. So Clay states the name of the movie with calling all the boys the losers. Right. And I, I put in here, I said, I, I in quotes, saying, I, I love Black Betty, a song, which is a great way to introduce the mission and the team with their mission. Just like the, the introduction of each character had uh, as the song was going on. And I thought the soundtrack was done well within the action, as well as the images that they gave us within the screenshots. So, uh, you know, just to give an idea of where I was thinking at the time when I was watching this as I was writing notes, uh, the action included with music and dialogue, the sacrifice the team does for the kids was really amazing. So that leads to the point of what we were thinking of when you first get interest, introduced to these guys. Uh, they really care for these kids and they got bloated up. You can see it in their faces with the whole thing, too. They feel guilty that those kids got killed because of them, and then they are blamed in the news about it, just like with the A-Team, uh, just to do a, a comparison. But the comic had come out long after that, as well as the movie. So right, uh, same feeling altogether. And I think, in general, the way they're able to introduce each character, it gives us a way of connecting with it. Not just to read my notes, but just to give you an explanation because I have everything bullet pointed and there's not really much to go on. <laughs> <laughs> I specifically liked, I mean, I don't know if you want to get into cer certain scenes and things like that right now. You can. Or what is, I don't know what you have next. <laughs> no, 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 no. I literally, this is general talk. We could just talk it in general. Uh, uh, th there are certain scenes that I do enjoy. Uh, the cockfight was great, I thought, in the very beginning. And no, that has nothing to be said about men together naked in any way. Uh, this is about an actual thing. I don't know if anybody out there was thinking about that except you, Mark. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, we're not a PG-13 kind of podcast, so we could say that <laughs> stuff here. But regardless, uh, I, I we get the introduction of uh, Aisha at that time, and we see it, uh, Roke, uh, Clay, and then they uh, connect trying to get back to some sort of normal where they've been isolated at. Uh, they were left in this country, and they can't really go back home at that point. And I, I just love how it's like, even when they say, when, even when Rope call, you know, tries to call him Colonel, Clay is like, don't call me that. Right. Because he's not in charge anymore. It's like they're just regular guys that have been outcasted from the world because of what had happened. And then uh, the first interaction with, uh, <laughs> with Aisha and Clay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny how she she went from, you know, of course, she was uh, trying to do like a heavy Spanish accent or something like that. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden she goes into, you know, regular uh, perfect American English. And you like, and he's like, whoa, your accent changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, hello, where'd that go? Right. <laughs> but no, I, I think, you know, there were some really cool scenes uh, on there. The I think the scene, the scenes that I liked the most. Or were they mostly kind of like riffing on each other? Mm. You know, they're they're just kind of making fun of each other, things like that. It's like in the beginning when you watch the film, at first, you know, you're hearing like something like happening, and then I don't, I, this, and I just watched the movie. But there's, <laughs> <laughs> I did, I just watched the movie. But there's a part there that just makes it seem like you know they it opens with like something going on, and then you're like, what? And it turns out that I think they were playing a game or something. Hmm. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. 
And then they were there was all they were also playing a game with um yeah, they were playing a game where they had cards on their foreheads. Oh, I think I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's how it starts. And then of course, you know, the bets are, you know, okay, Edris Alba puts out a knife, then Chris Evan puts out a you know a revolver, then um uh the guy who plays what's his name? Um Pooch. Pooch. Uh what's the actor's name on that? Hmm. Uh, Columbus Short. Okay. Yeah. So he uh, he puts out a bigger gun, and then Nazros comes out with a bigger knife. <laughs> you know, and, and <laughs> that was like with a Rambo knife. You know, yeah. uh, you know, in every Rambo movie, it gets bigger. It went from yeah. the regular survival one by well, Rambo funny, too. Funny, was... funny enough, you say that because that knife that he that is the second knife that he put out. It's yeah. a knife that was designed by Gil Hibbins. Okay, and that knife was actually designed for Rambo Three, um, <laughs> which I, is the one in Russia, or him dealing with the Russians at that time. Correct, where it was like a huge thing. So, <laughs> it and I know like a machete. <laughs> yes, and I know this because I own that knife too. Oh, I own, I own a replica of that knife. So, <laughs> so as soon as he whipped it, I was like, "Hey, that's the same knife I have." But I like like so I like those parts. Like uh another perfect example of that was like um towards the very end where you you know of the movie where yeah. all of a sudden it seems like they're on another mission and in reality it was Pooch trying to get to his wife's um uh you know who's giving birth to his uh son mm. or I I don't know if it was a son or daughter, but uh but well, the thing she is, was pregnant and then she was ready to get birth at that right, point. But the yeah. whole thing is you think it's actually a mission and when in reality <laughs> it's him trying to sneak into the uh, hospital. And I thought that was kind of a cool thing where everybody oh, at the was very part- end, yeah. yeah, where they yeah. were participating. And then the funniest part, of course, is the soccer match towards oh, the end. Jensen's niece. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, and they're all there, and then Aisha's like, uh, who who bet on uh, against her? I forget it, and then Jensen gets all pissed off, and then he goes, "Well, who would bet against? Uh, who would take points?" And she goes, "He gave me good odds." Yeah, and now Aisha, Aisha is part of the crew at that point. Right. So, correct. Yeah, and and she's actually hand in hand if you look at it, her and Clay. So it's like okay, it's, things did work out, but it's so funny how within the particular movie itself between Aisha and Clay, it's like hot cold hot cold well you know, her, know who's playing who right yeah, yeah because her motivation was because she wanted to really kill him mm-hmm. because i think he killed her dad yes um so then you know but then somehow she's now in the group you know I, well she figured out it wasn't him that killed her father it was him it was him it was him he said that you know your your father was a bad man so yeah he said i killed him Oh, that's but right. she said that <laughs> they would deal with this after they finish, you know, trying to get, you know, Jason Patrick's character mm-hmm. and uh, Max. Max. And um, but then after that, it just seems like, OK, she's now part of the group. So what happened to that tension kind of thing? So they, they kind of went through it with sex, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I just it, know that it was probably a little bit more elaborate within the comics. Probably. I mean, like I said, I might have to read the comics just to see <laughs> how that was dealt with. Yeah, I like that. I like the fact that all of a sudden, you know, this guy went freaking crazy when they knocked down his niece and he just went out there to, you know, uh, argue with the <laughs> referee and everybody had to get involved and all yeah. these things. Again, a really cool group. So yeah. those are the, those are the moments in the film that I liked a lot. And I think my my favorite part of the thing was when Chris Evan is singing gets into the elevator and then after that when he's escaping and he's pointing at the guards with his uh fingers mm-hmm. and he says that he could use you know he has you know uh mental powers and you know and cuz he was experimented on and next thing you know he shoots them and in reality it is um uh, what is it cougar uh his yeah. uh his, one, his gun yeah he's actually he's a you sniper. know he's a sniper and he's the one that that was like one of the coolest scenes there, you know, so <laughs> which is also too funny for the fact that Chris Evans was in another superhuman kind of movie. It wasn't Captain America, everybody. 
He was in a movie called Push from 2009 where people had physical mental powers that they could do that with their fingers. So was he? Yeah. You know what? Was he in? Yes, he was. Bush. Isn't that the one that Michael B. Jordan was also in it? Uh, let me take a look at the uh, casting on that. Uh, Dakota Fanning, Chris Evans, uh, Camilla Bell, uh, Colin Ford. I'm, I'm thinking probably of something else. Demon Hansu, Joe Gresh. Nah. Yeah, it actually had Corey Stoll in it, too, from Ant-Man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, so, yeah, th- it's not the one that I thought it was. No, but this this one is about super-powered people right? and how they're on the run and then people are trying to chase them. And he has these kind of same powers. But the, the fact that the Losers came out a year after that movie and he talks about something that he had powers in from that particular film. Oh, <laughs> That's okay. <a> joke. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Interesting. All right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I also like the uh, a lot of Max's um, things, like when he was playing, um, I think they were playing Go Fish or something. Right. And uh, the way he just like, uh, uh, like he just winds up killing one of the guys during the card game. <laughs> and And it's just like that typical over the top villain that you do get from comics, like the Joker or something. And on top of that, um, at the very end, when he's on the bus after he's got a gunshot wound, and the guy goes, "Yo, SA, what do you got?" And he's on the bus, and he hands, he puts his hand out with his Rolex on it after getting off the phone with Clay. Yeah, I mean, this film was actually uh, the film is criticized for being a little bit insensitive to, uh, you know, other uh, ethnic backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds, because he does imitate. Like you know, uh, with an Indian accent, he and then of course you yes. know the stereotype of you know the uh, the guys at the bus and stuff like that. Yeah. So you know, so it got criticized definitely for that. But other than that, like I said, to me, it was still a, gr- a great movie. Yeah, you got to take it with a grain of salt with certain okay. things like that. I always think. Uh, I also like the uh, with uh, what with Aisha when she comes to everybody's. Uh, yeah, she comes to everybody's rescue with the bazooka or the huge uh, air, air to uh, what was it, land right. air rocket <laughs> to, <laughs> to save them at the end. I'm like, oh my god, that's over the top. That's pretty cool. Yeah, the, there were things like that that I really did enjoy. And honestly, folks, we're not going to go a play by play. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. With this one, we're not. Uh, if you as from what we could tell from what we liked in a film, yeah, some of the stuff is not politically correct. But overall, if you want to watch a good, like what Rob said before, a great popcorn flick, this would be probably one of them that you would want to do and right. watch. Uh, it, it's out there. You could probably rent it or buy it cheaply at this point through iTunes or Amazon Prime. Or even look out for like HBO Max or, or what what's Max now? That's called the app or right. Showtime, and you could probably find it there on on demand or maybe even Pluto TV. It depends, but <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the, there's a lot going on in this film. Uh, we don't want to go too far intense of it, but you know we did enjoy it. We hope you guys enjoy it. If you haven't watched it, and like I said, this was a spoiler full podcast, but. Uh, if you like, a lot of people like to listen to these, so that way they'd be like, oh, this is what I can look forward to or look out for when I watch the film. Yeah, there's a lot of sexuality in it. You see a lot of, like I said, you do see a lot of Zoe Saldana. No, there's not full nudity. Sorry, but. No, you but do- you, you have a lot of parts where, you know, they focus on her rear that you got parts. That, you know, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. You know, but, so- yeah, it's there. It's but a little it, bit sexualized, but not it's not gratuitous, is what I would say. Yeah, yeah, it, exactly. But yeah, it's something that we both endorse and uh, suggest highly. If you've seen it before and you have any opinions, always let us know. As always, uh, to moving uh, to move a little bit forward, I didn't really get too much because there's not really much out there about this particular film. But with. Uh, what I did find out, I found out uh, in some interesting facts or unknown facts or even trivia, 
As in the comics, Colonel Clay is wearing a white t-shirt with a black suit. The only time he isn't in a suit is in the beginning of the film. Correct. So that that's something that's out there that's kind of trivia. Director Sylvan White was attracted by the realistic nature of the comic. To do the film, what appealed to me about The Losers was that it wasn't a uh, the typical superhero with superpowers thing. It was based on real characters, realistic characters, and based in reality, like a lot of European graphic novels that I had grown up reading. So that was the reason for him to actually do this particular film. So those were the few things that I, I found online that were uh, interesting about the, the film. But there's not really that much out there. Uh, I know that Minty Comedic Arts has actually done things, uh, 10 things you didn't know about the losers. So you can look for that. And there's a few other uh, YouTubers out there that I highly recommend that actually did cover this movie in particular. But uh, if you want those, let us know. Yeah, you know, that's where feedback comes into uh, to place. And uh, did you have any? Uh, did you have any like quotes or anything, Rob, from the movie or now? Um, there were, you know, it's funny. There, there's a lot of great quotes in this movie that I would say that, uh, and I'm trying, like, I only have a couple. Well, why don't you start it off? All right. All right. One of which I have here is Aisha about Roke and Clay. You know, if you're really fought, you would be dead because you care about the others. Mm. Because, uh, if you realize it towards the end, everybody Roke went a little bit rogue on clay. <laughs> a little. <laughs> <laughs> so you had guns against knives. So you never bring a knife to a gunfight. Just saying. Yeah, that's an understatement there. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last one I would have would be never touch the hat. And that's Cougar after the save from the ex execution, because at the very end, they were all right. ready to be executed. And then somebody tries that. He goes, never touch the hat. <laughs> yeah, I would say the the quote that I liked the most was uh, Jensen when he says, I'm warning you, I'm a lethal killing machine. It was a secret government experiment. They did <laughs> stuff to me. Spooky stuff. Anal stuff. <laughs> it turned me into a dangerous telekinetic. <laughs> As the ancient Tibetan philosophy states, don't start none, won't be none. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> and I, I, like I said, I, I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed this movie. Like I said, it was fun. Yeah, it is fun. All right. Uh, well, I think we covered a lot of this particular film. Like I always say to everybody, it's like if you, if there's something we haven't covered or anything that we on this particular podcast do, send in feedback. Uh, for you to send in any of your feedback, uh, feedback, all you have to do is go to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, or facebook.com forward slash Panels to Pixels. And then, uh, you know, just leave them in the comments or do it through Messenger. Uh, you can email us at Adrenaline Cinema Podcast at gmail.com. And there you could do a texted email or even just record yourself and send that in, you know, your voice. And as an attachment, and we'll play it. Same thing with the uh, Panels to Pixels podcast. All you have to do is send it to panels to pixels one at gmail.com. Panels spelled out, and then two is spelled T O, and then pixels, and the number one at gmail.com. You could find us on Instagram as well at panels to pixels podcast and at adrenaline cinema podcast. And uh, the best thing you could do is actually uh, give us a uh, rating or review that will get us noticed a little bit more. Five star, five stars is highly appreciated, but it, it gets us out there in the ether of the world. So people see that once a five star go review goes up, people will actually know it. But please type out something if you can uh, spread the word. And then with the word, you could always talk to a friend and say, hey, I listened to this other podcast. It's here. And then you can just. Mention Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, Panels to Pixels Podcast, and they could find it on any player of choice. We could be found at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, 
any of those. But uh, just tell a friend. Word it of mouth helps us. Everywhere. Everywhere. As well as on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so all you have to do is check us out. Panels to Pixels podcast on YouTube. Adrenaline Cinema podcast on YouTube. So uh, with that, we also like you to check out all the other stuff because we're in association with Pyrocore Entertainment. So all you have to do is go to PyrocoreEntertainment.com. You could listen to or see other podcasts that are out there. Watched it in the 80s. Fantasy Picks Movie Edition and all the links for Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. So there you have it. Uh, so where else can listeners hear you, Rob? Uh, you can listen to us on Fantasy Picks Movie Edition, where we cover uh, failed big budget uh, big budget movies. Uh, we do our fantasy drafts or our fan or yeah our fantasy pick drafts. Uh, in film, depending on whether it's uh, actors, directors, or any kind of genre out there. And we also do cover uh, spotlights on film composers. Right now, we're we're on a hiatus uh, for, you know, uh, season, you know, getting ready for season three. But as always, you know, if you do hear it, you know, let us know what you think. Uh, we're always looking to improve the podcast. And, you know, and you can always reach us out there. You'll see us also on... Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, TikTok, and, you know, all those socials out there. Awesome. And as always, you guys could hear me here on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, as well as Panels to Pixels Podcast. They're all simultaneous. You could hear me on Fantasy Picks Movie Edition when I jump on there with Rob, Adam, and Frank when we cover all the stuff that uh, that Rob just mentioned. Uh, you could hear me on Monarch Cast or uh, on Podcast Cast slash Wilhelm. It's a uh, dual podcast with Wilhelm and podcastica.com. And we're covering Monarch Legacy of Monsters. And we're finishing that up. So uh, check that out. Hope you guys are enjoying it. Please do send in feedback. All you have to do is go to Wilhelm.com or podcastica.com and check that out there. And uh, eventually you'll be hearing me on the Buffyverse podcast as well as a guest. <laughs> but um, and until then, we are still covering what if season two on panels to pixels podcast so keep in touch with that and we will be doing more on panels to pixels podcast as well as more on adrenaline cinema podcast as the new year comes so i hope everyone here has had a happy new year so uh happy new year and uh keep on listening and uh just keep in mind we all appreciate you so thank you and good night i'm mark and i'm rob and we'll see you guys later. Don't stop believing. <laughs> <laughs>